Right, so the Labour Files' latest episode has blown apart some serious BBC issues. Another reason to tune into Al Jazeera English on YouTube and watch it. But first, a little context. Something the BBC doesn't seem to believe in these days, as we shall see. Once upon a time, there was a panorama documentary covering Labour anti-Semitism, and it was entitled, Is the Labour Party Anti-Semitic? It aired on the 10th of July 2019, ahead of the 2019 general election, and was widely seen as part of the attack on then Labour leader Jeremy Corbyn, as part of a push by establishment interests to bring him down, terrified of the changes he'd bring in. God forbid he make this country run in our interests instead. Anyway, it featured misleading statements. Context was changed by doing so. It is, in my opinion, a truly nasty piece of work. Anyway, not wishing to discuss it any further, it was reported earlier this year that the BBC had issued some follow-up clarification, almost four years after broadcast and hidden away on its own website so as to be as unnoticeable as possible. Now, what could have prompted that? Covering their backsides because somebody had finally made a complaint, perhaps? For a litigation, even? All rather strange and suspicious stuff, this timing, so long after the, the, the broadcast of the original programme. Now, the correction related to an interviewee on that program called Izzy Lenga, a Jewish student Labour activist. The Panorama program edited her interview so that it was put out with Izzy saying, I'm Izzy Lenga. I joined the Labour Party in 2015. The anti-Semitic abuse I received was what I sub subjected to every single day, telling me Hitler was right, telling me Hitler didn't go far enough. In Labour meetings, we've seen people engage in Holocaust denial, and that's terrifying to Jewish members. It absolutely breaks my heart to say but I do not think the Labour Party is a safe space for Jewish people anymore. That's damning. That appears to show Corbyn presided over an appalling racist party, but as I said, it was edited to within an inch of its life. And earlier this year, Lenga's full commentary became public. What the BBC should have broadcast if the Panorama documentary had any intention of being impartial, the full statement would have been, I'm Lizzie Lenga. I joined the Labour Party in 2015. When I was a student, being quite a high-profile Jewish student, I was subjected to quite a lot of nasty vitriol and abuse. The anti-Semitic abuse I received was what I was subjected to every single day. Predictably, a lot of it came from the far right, neo-Nazi abuse, telling me Hitler was right, telling me Hitler did not go far enough, and even more. What absolutely baffled me was at the same time I was receiving very similar, almost often the exact same tropes and anti-Semitic abuse from the far left. In Labour Party meetings, we've seen people engage in Holocaust denial, and that's terrifying to Jewish members. It absolutely breaks my heart to say, but I do not think the Labour Party is a safe space for Jewish people anymore. Now, this certainly doesn't excuse racism on the left of the party, but Lenga was very much critical of the right as well. Yet that was completely edited out. She pointed to issues across the Labour Broad Church, yet the BBC skewed this, showing the affair to be a politically motivated scam without any intention of pushing for real change on racism, just a change in Labour leadership. Now we come on to the latest episode of the Labour Files from Al Jazeera, featuring the author of the much-anticipated Ford report, Martin Ford KC, who made some interesting revelations regarding the BBC, as well as issues within the Labour Party, which I've covered in another video. Ford made comment that the mainstream media were not interested in his report, only having been contacted by one unnamed media outlet about it, which admitted to not having read his report. It clearly wasn't the BBC, though, as they contacted Ford for an entirely different reason. They wanted him to alter it. In his report, Ford had said that Panorama's use of Labour Party emails in its documentary were entirely misleading. Short to the point. One such email, the main one, featured on Panorama, and this is another example of the sort we'd seen just a moment ago regarding Izzy Lenga, came from Seamus Milne, Labour's then Director of Communications to the Labour Party Disciplinary Unit. Panorama presented this by alleging Milne had said to them that in response to anti-Semitism, that they are muddling up politics and racism, and that that needs to be reviewed. Gives the impression that Labour didn't care about it, didn't it? Wanted to cover it up, really. But the full response from Milne reads very differently. Milne actually wrote, this member is a Jewish activist in response to somebody who was facing disciplinary action. The son of a Holocaust survivor. If we're more than very occasionally using disciplinary action against Jewish members for anti-Semitism, something's going wrong. And we're muddling up political disputes and racism. Quite apart from this specific case, I think going forward, we need to review where and how we're drawing the line if we're going to have clear and defensible processes. This literally shows Labour at that time were trying to do something. And instead of showing that, the BBC tried to spin it to mean the complete opposite. 
and they had the brass neck to approach Martin Ford about altering his version of events, his report, to help them push their own rancid production as the truth. Ford was approached by the then editor of Panorama, named by Al Jazeera as Karen Whiteman, who said, I would be grateful if you would consider amending your report in respect of your references to Panorama so that it more fairly reflects what the programme actually said. Wow. Talk about arrogance. They knew their show was crock, yet tried to get a King's Council to work their way. It wasn't the end of it there either. The documentary maker, John Ware, who told Ford that your report has done significant damage to my reputation and to that of the Corporation for Journalistic Integrity, may I ask you to respond by 4pm tomorrow, 11th of October? He's had some nerve as well. As Ford said, it, it read like a summons. How, how threatening is the tone in that? Who the hell do these people at the BBC actually think they are? Ford, a man of actual integrity, refused to change his report. Ford was charitable, however, and he said where, where, where his evidence took him. But given how heavily his evidence appears to have been edited in order to promote a certain narrative, isn't that not questionable in and of itself? Ford claims he had access to far more information than Ware ever did. I don't dispute that. So it really was a toys out of the pram hissy fit from a man who ought to have known better, really, don't you think? Of course, the Milne email was covered by Al Jazeera previously in another of their Labour Files shows, which Ford has watched, and they left him feel vindicated in his decision to stand by his words as a result, saying that it was clear to him that the emails where the Panorama production team had access to had, in his words, been filleted to change the context completely, losing it and implying the intent was other than that of the truth. The show, in his words, had become objectively misleading. There's a polite term for what passes as factual information put out by the BBC, isn't it? There's more damning coverage of the BBC in the Labour Files show. I'm not going to go out of my way to spoil the whole thing. It's well worth a watch. I really would like you to go and watch it. Please absolutely do. It all adds up to what is now becoming increasingly clear following more recent events at the BBC over Gary Lineker, for example, that the BBC is not independent and it is not impartial, but they are becoming an ever more factional organisation, telling you not what you need to know, but what other people want you to hear. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit like and subscribe, leave a comment and hit the notification bell too so you don't miss the next one. Also look out for me on social media and other interesting stuff by clicking on the Linktree link in the comments below. And I will see you next time. Cheers, folks.